said, O Sutta, fortunate Sutta, thou art blessed with thy mind engrossed in Shiva. The story that thou hast narrated to us is wonderful and conducive to the increase of devotion. O intelligent one, what did the woman Chanchala do after obtaining her salvation? Sutta said, once she approached goddess Parvati, she bowed and offered prayers to her with palms joined in delight. Chanchala said, O mother of all, daughter of the mountain, O beloved of Shiva, bestower of all pleasures, having the form of the supreme Brahman, thou art worthy of being served by Vishnu, Brahma, and other gods. Thou art both endowed with and devoid of attributes. Thou art the subtle primordial Prakriti, with existence, knowledge, and bliss for thy forms. Thou createst, maintainest, and annihilatest. Thou hast the three gunas. Thou sustainest Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. Sutta said, offering thus her prayers to the goddess, Chanchala, who had attained salvation, with shoulders stooping and eyes brimming with tears of love, ceased talking. Parvati, the beloved of Shiva, ever favoring her devotees, was greatly moved by pity and said to Chanchala lovingly, O oh Chanchala, my friend, I am pleased to hear your prayer. O oh beautiful woman, what is the boon you crave from me? Tell me, there is nothing that I cannot give you. Sutta said, thus urged by Girija, Chanchala bowed to her. She asked her, bending her head and joining her palms together with great devotion. Chanchala said, O celestial Girija, I do not know where my husband is nor where he is to go. O benign favorite of the distressed, please arrange for me to join him. O great goddess Maheshani, my husband had a Shudra woman as his concubine. He died before me. I do not know what befell that sinner. Sutta said, On hearing these words of Chanchala, Parvati, the daughter of the Himalaya, who is fond of justice, replied lovingly, O daughter, your wicked sinful husband, Binduga, the foolish wretch enamored of prostitutes has been to hell after his death. He underwent various tortures for many years. Due to the residue of sins, now he has become a Pishaka ghost in the Vindhya mountains. Even now that wicked fellow is undergoing various painful tortures. He has only wind for his diet and is suffering from all sorts of miseries. <coughs> Sutta said, on hearing these words of Gauri, Chanchala of auspicious rites was overwhelmed by the pain at the news of her husband's distress. She somehow steadied her mind, bowed to Maheshwari, and with a worried heart asked the goddess, O Maheshwari, O great goddess, be kind to me. Please redeem my husband, though he be a wicked perpetrator of evil actions. What is the means by which my husband, the sinful wretch of crooked intellect, can attain salvation? O goddess, obeisance to thee. Please explain to me. Sutta said, On hearing these words of Chanchala, Parvati, always favorably disposed to her devotees, replied to her chaperone, delighted in her heart. Parvati said, if your husband were to hear the holy story of Shiva, he shall surmount the misery entirely and attain salvation. 
On hearing these words of Gauri, little short of nectar, Chanchala bent her shoulders, joined her palms, and bowed repeatedly with great devotion. She requested the goddess to provide an opportunity for her husband to hear the story for quelling his sins and gaining redemption. Sutta said, Gauri, the beloved of Shiva, on being ardently requested by the woman, took pity on her, for she is always favorably disposed to her devotees. Lovingly, she sent for the Gandharva king Tumburu, who sang beautiful songs of praise of Shiva. The daughter of Himalaya said thus to him. Girija said, O Tumburu, the favorite of Shiva, ever ready to do as I wish, blessedness be thine. Accompany this lady immediately to Vindhya Mountain. There is an awfully terrible Pishacha there. You will be interested to know his history. This Pishacha had been a Brahmana in his previous birth. Then he was the husband of this woman, who is my chaperone now. He was very wicked and had a shudra concubine. He was impure, never caring for the daily performance of abusions and sandhya prayers. His mind was ever vitiated by anger. He ate all sorts of foul things. He quarreled with good men, and whatever he undertook was bad. He was violent in his ways, bearing weapons and oppressing poor people cruelly. He used to take food with his left hand. He committed arson in other people's houses. He was friendly with chandalas. Every day he took delight in the company of prostitutes, forsaking his own wife. In evil association with harlots, he destroyed all his merits. Besides, coveting more and more wealth, he made his own wife a fearless sharer of her paramour's beds. His evil ways continued till the last moments of his life, and when he died he went to Yama's city, the terrible place where sinners reap the fruits of their misdeeds. After undergoing the tortures of many hells, the wicked wretch is now roaming in the Vindhya mountains as a roguish, sinful pishacha. Narrate to him the holy sanctifying tale of sacred Shiva Purana that quells all sins. Immediately after hearing the great story of Shiva Purana, his soul will be cleared of sins and he will cast off his ghosthood. I order you to set that Binduga free from his miserable plight and bring him in the aerial chariot to the presence of Lord Shiva. Sutta said, Commanded thus by Parvati, Tumbaru, the lord of Gandharvas, was much delighted and thought within himself how fortunate he was. Tumbaru, the comrade of Narada, went to the Vindhya mountain, seated in the aerial chariot with Chanchala, the sinless woman. They saw the Pishacha laughing, crying, and loudly shouting by turns. His body was very huge, his jaws were immensely large, and his form was very crooked. The powerful Tumbaru, the singer of the excellent songs of praise of Shiva, forcefully caught hold of the terrible Pishacha by means of nooses, Thereafter, for the sake of the discourse on Shiva Purana, Tumbaru made elaborate festive arrangements. There was much talk and discussion among the people of all the worlds. Oh, Tumbaru has gone to the Vindhya mountain at the suggestion of the goddess to narrate the story of Shiva Purana to redeem the Pishacha. The divine sages, too, hastened to the place for listening to Shiva Purana. The wonderful congregation that assembled there, reverently eager to listen to Shiva Purana, was very auspicious. They bound the Pishacha with nooses, compelling him to sit there. With the lute in his hands, Tumbaru began to sing the story of Gauri's consort. Starting with the first Sanghita and ending with the seventh, he clearly expounded the whole of Shiva Purana along with its Mahatmya. On hearing the Shiva Purana of seven Sanghitas with great reverence, all the listeners deemed themselves highly blessed. The Pishacha, too, on hearing the holy Shiva Purana, cast off all his sins 
and discarded his ghostly body. He assumed the divine form of the three-eyed, moon-crested god Shiva, white in complexion, clad in white cloth, with body illuminated and embellished by all in ornaments. Taking up a divine body, the glorious Binduga, accompanied by his wife, sang the story of Parvati's consort. On seeing his wife thus, all the divine sages had a welcome surprise and were highly delighted in their minds. Gratified on hearing the wonderful story of Shiva, they returned to their respective abodes, delightedly glorifying Shiva. Binduga, in his divine form, ascended the aerial chariot with great pleasure. High up in the sky with his wife at his side, he shone brilliantly. Singing the pleasing attributes of Shiva, he hastened to Shiva's region, accompanied by Tumburu and his own wife. Binduga was welcomed by Shiva and Parvati and was lovingly made their attendant. In that permanent abode of excellent bliss and sublime luster, he acquired an unassailable residence and unobstructed pleasure. Thus I have narrated this holy anecdote that removes sins and is highly delightful to Shiva and Parvati in pure and increasing devotion. Anyone who listens to this account with devotion and recites it piously shall enjoy immense pleasures and obtain liberation.